You're used to being the guy, you're playing both sides of the ball in high school. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the process of waiting to find your spot. What's the biggest difference kind of on the buzz and the atmosphere surrounding this game? As um, at first it was hard, just always just growing up, always being that guy. Um, How is it different in the playoffs? It was a little rough, but actually I feel like that year really benefited me. It allowed me to become more of a student of the game and um, just learning what I need to do, what the people around me did. Um, me and Shaq Smith, I remember like when the team would be on away games, we would come in here and, and watch like install tapes just to figure out what we can do. And we just did everything we could to possibly be better. And I think that year benefited me last year best. Last year you could have Mm -hmm. back Even if you guys like try to keep it as normal as possible as a team and, and in your preparation, what, you, it, how hard is it to keep the buzz really out? I mean, there's a tremendous amount of buzz that's going to be surrounding this ball game. Um, first of all, I want to come back and get my degree. I always promised my mom I'm going to get my college degree, so I couldn't break that promise. That was the main thing, and um, I didn't want to sum myself out. I felt like I was leaving. I would be leaving some things on the table if I would have left early last year. So... Um, yeah, that's probably those are the main reasons I came back. I mean, I would classify myself as a linebacker, but I feel like I can really do anything. Um, I feel like I can learn it all, and I don't think there's anything like physically or mentally that could like stop me from playing any position. So I don't really know how I would describe it. Um, Kind of like a Swiss Army knife would probably be the best thing I could say. What do you expect to see out of Ohio State's, uh, you know, out of their offensive line? And, and again, obviously, uh, you're seeing a different level quarterback, a different level running back, a couple of guys who went for the Heisman Trophy. Uh, just, just your expectations of facing the guys. Your, your development on that. Uh, so coming out of high school, I didn't really know if I wanted to play receiver or defense. So. As time went wrong, I went through recruiting. I finally came down to like, I just want to play defense. So when I came into that, it was really mostly just safety. So doing that and then going through a couple years of college, I felt like the nickel spot to where it's kind of like a safety, but I also get to do linebacker things here in this system. Um, I feel like that was a spot for me. So going up to Coach V and talking to him about switching there, uh, I feel like that's been the best for me. So since, ever since then, the rest has kind of been history. It seems you've made the chemist dropping back in coverage. You also like to push the quarterback a little bit. You're, you're in there stopping the run. What do you feel like you do best? What do you like doing best when that play call comes? What's your favorite thing? Um, I don't know because uh, getting an interception and getting a sack, they kind of go hand in hand. You can't really pick which one is better. So I don't know if I could really say I have a favorite. Um, I just love the game of football, and any plays I get to make, I love to make them. I say when you guys look at the tape of Ohio State, what do you guys see? What step, steps up on the tape when you guys walk out of your meeting rooms? Can you say that again? What, what steps up on the tape of Ohio State guys when you walk out of the meeting rooms? Um, I don't know. I mean, at this point, everybody's good, so you kind of just got to be on your P's and Q's with everything you do. and. Figure out how you're going to make the least amount of mistakes. Isaiah, have you gotten caught up in any of this NFL draft talk surrounding you, the, you know, jumping up on the, on the big board and your stock getting up there? No, not really. I mean, until January 13th is over, that none of that really matters to me. Um, so it's kind of irrelevant. Because me paying attention to that now is going to do what for me? Nothing. So... Um, yeah, so until January 13th comes, I'm not really worried about anything NFL related. Is it hard to tune it out? I mean, not really, personally, not for me. Yeah. Um, I'm more focused on what I have now in the moment, which is um, trying to play for a national championship. So it's not really hard for me to block it out at all. You have a lot of time when you play Ohio State. What is the process for you to make the decision of? This is it. I mean, win or lose, this is, I'm going out. Or, you know, I, you know, I want to look one more year. Well, when do you start that process to make that decision? To make your decision? Um, January 13th. That's when I'll make that decision. What, how have you seen this, this team, I guess, grow up in the last month and a half? Even as good as you guys are, you seem to take it to another level. What, what, uh, what kicked in? Give me the good answer. I wouldn't say anything kicked in. Each and every week, we look at the mistakes we made and try to eliminate them. So, um, you know, we're not going to play perfect, but we can try to eliminate the mistakes that we make. 
in the previous games as much as we can. So that's probably what we do each and every week. This team, we're young, but we're also very mature. Um, no one's really worried about what the media is saying about us, um, about our weak D-line and things like that. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It's what we, we know what we got here, um, and we feel like we got all the ingredients. So just, just focusing in on what we have within the walls here is really the main thing. You know, talking about your D-line, did you expect them to play at the level they are, given you were losing so many NFL guys? I mean, it's got to be a weird feeling. Uh, absolutely. I mean, our coaches went out and offered them scholarships just like they offered Christian, Klee, Austin, Dexter. So um, I don't understand why they wouldn't be able to. Um, they all put the shoes on the same way. So it would be wrong for me to expect less of them just because they're younger or whatever it is opposed to what I expect from those guys. Did any of their play surprise you? I mean, you see Tyler, I mean, he's in high school last year you know, getting ready. Is any, of the, is any of it surprising? I wouldn't say surprising. Ever since he got here, he's been about his business. So um, he's going to be an amazing player. Just He's just so mature in this game. Um, about all his about his business, and even the guys who um, who redshirted this year, they're all going to be great players. Um, it's just it's just something different, um, something like I've never seen. Everybody really cares about their craft here, so with that, I feel like nobody can stop you when you really care about something. And you're really driven to get there. Talking to me about the one versatility, one up against Justin Fields. Do you feel like you can be the X factor on this defense to you know limit him? Um, I mean, it potentially could be, but each week I just try to do my 111 and dominate it as much as I can. So, really, I'm just gonna I rely on my teammates just to do their job. So, and I believe if everybody does their job, then we can come out on top. Yeah, I mean, the opportunity just to play against great competition is always a plus. Um, I feel like you don't want to just play people who aren't very good each and every week. So we also kind of pride ourselves. That's why we pride ourselves in playing Clemson. Um, you got to know, obviously, who you're playing, but at the end of the day, you got to know what you have to do. Um, I would say our experience is uh, built into it a little bit, but at the end of the day, every single game of the week, of the year, um, is the biggest game. Um, no matter if we're playing like a lesser opponent, it's the biggest game of the year, not because of who we're playing, but because we're playing Clemson. So each and every week, we want to play ourselves, opposed to playing to an opponent, because we don't play. We don't want to play up to an opponent, play down to an opponent. Um, each and every week, we want to play our best four quarters. So I think just having that kind of mentality, opposed to, oh, this is the playoffs. Now we got to kick on, kick a switch on. Um, you can't do it like that, or else. You you're just not going to be successful with it. So just doing that and treating it each and every week like it's a playoff game, like we're playing for the national championship, um, I'd probably say that's what helps us out the most. Coach Sweeney always tells us if you were playing anybody, say you're playing the Patriots for the national championship, um, how would you prepare no matter who we're playing? So um, that takes a lot of maturity within a team to to like not play down on an opponent or anything and know that you're playing yourselves each and every week. So I'd probably say that's what helps us out the most. Several years ago, when you played Ohio State, you didn't know how to play. Mm -hmm. This time, you're going to play key roles. What do you remember about that game and that Ohio State team? And, and it seems like the disrespect has worn off the last few weeks. Um, they had a lot of dynamic players, just like they do now. Um, they made. I mean, obviously, teams are going to make plays regardless on both sides, but. Um, what I saw the most was that um, Clemson was able to make the least amount of mistakes um, within the game, and our guys were really, really focused within our game plan and just executed it very well.